Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this Friday, the 24th of uh, September 2021. Thank you for tuning in. You know, I'm going to tell you guys, when you wake up in the morning, you go out and you open up your front door. Everything's the same, you know, as it was back in 19, 2019 or 2018. Your house is still there. The sun still comes up in the morning, you know. But boy, gosh, our lives sure have changed. <clears throat> and somehow, you know, I sit there and I think to myself, how uh, maybe all of these things that are happening maybe are possibly related. But the world hasn't changed. The world's still the same. We're still the same. We're still the same people. It's just the situations have changed in the world. Why? You know? A lot of question marks run through my head. All these things that seem to be happening in the world to us, you know. Uh, the weather seems to be freaky. The best way to describe it is freaky. It's not normal. Oh, the whole world is not normal. Uh, you know, back in China, back, uh, 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 it was a while ago. It was like a year, maybe a year and a half. Well, maybe two years ago. It was quite a little while ago. They had hail, a hailstorm, and the hail quite literally came down in the form of coronaviruses. They looked like the, the spike viruses in, in corona. They were raining down from the sky in the hail, and they were big hail, great big hail balls, and they were shaped just like coronas. A lot of people don't know about that. It's for real. Things like that for real have been actually happening, you know. Uh tornadoes in places now where you don't normally get tornadoes you know uh, we got these heat waves extended in, and now here here in Canada I have never seen a year where the where the heats lasted so long well it's not real hot now but it's unseasonably warm very unseasonably warm for this time of year here in Canada you know uh, today, where I'm at, normal normally this time of year, it might go up to like 16 degrees Celsius. And today it's going up to like 25. That's the kind of, you know, what I'm saying. It's not, things are not normal. Things are out of whack around the whole world. But the world's the same. I look around and I see the world. The sun still comes up the same. Everything's the same in a universal position. I mean, the way the... Way the the way it was, you know, before, but it's so many events have changed things for our lives. Viruses going around and weather going crazy and, and uh, you know, I can't help but think of how many things that mankind can actually control now with their modern technology. They can control things like whether you're sick or not. They can control things now like uh, like whether it's going to be raining tomorrow or not. Or whether it's going to be hot tomorrow or not. They can control things like uh, through the use of different kinds of uh, technology. They can control the, the harmonics in the ground below your feet now with this technologies. And now we're moving toward more advanced technologies where they're going to be able to create computers that can actually think for themselves. I remember a Star Trek episode years and years ago. Captain Kirk was fighting some sort of a computer. He was trying, I think he was just trying to turn it off. But the computer could think for itself. And it sh it, that episode was maybe, maybe a, an awful lot of the things in Star Trek, you know, have come true in modern science. It's absolutely uncanny. But anyway, I'm digressing a little bit about what's happening in the world today. We have China today, and you know, you guys know that there's a trade war going on between the United States and China. Well, today, China decided that they are going to outlaw all cryptocurrency transactions. No more cryptocurrency trend. And this has very adversely affected the price of cryptocurrencies, which 
is on its way, quite literally, to becoming the West's new gold, you know. Now, I wonder what other countries might follow suit. You don't know. Other countries might start to follow suit. This might be the Cinderella story. There might, I, I can see that there could possibly be a Cinderella story coming for silver. I want you guys to watch a little attachment I put in. It's funny, you know, a little attachment I put in the, uh, you can click on it in, in, the, in the description of this video. And way, the way I see it, that's China and the USA fighting. <laughs> it's on, baby. I mean, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Anyway, listen, this might be the Cinderella story for silver coming up. It might be the biggest Cinderella story in the financial world for the last thousand years because it's been so suppressed and so held down. And when it finally breaks free, and I'm not really referring so much to gold, I'm referring to silver. An awful lot of people don't know that they've went through and they've mined gold for thousands of years, and they don't lose a lot of it. Not a lot of it's lost. Ear, you got a pair of earrings and stuff, maybe a gold ring or whatever. They always people take it in, they sell it. Or it ends up it ends up being smelted back down into bars and stored in gold vaults. They've been doing that. They've been saving the gold, storing it in vaults and bars for thousands of years. These countries have it all hoarded away in in, in different vaults. In the United States, this vault is called uh, a Fort Knox, you know. And there's an awful lot of gold out there. But silver's different. They've been consuming it. Using it all up. Gold, nor gold and silver normally come out of the ground. Normally, if you're digging in a mine or whatever, you're going to be getting like eight or nine ounces of silver for every ounce of gold that you dig out of the ground. The silver, the amount of silver that they get when they dig out of the ground is dropping because they've dug all the good spots. They went around the earth and found all the good spots, the tender spots that have lots of silver, and they've dug it all out already. So with their modern technology, they were able to do this rather quickly. They were able to do it like in a, uh, a 50 or 100 year period where back with the old technology, which was a pick and shovel, it would have taken them thousands of years. Now they're able to scour it all out. Now they're getting to the point where they've mostly got all the better stuff scoured out. There's still some there, but it's not quite as good a quality ore. This is going to affect it too. You know, it's going to be harder and harder to get more and more good silver. It only comes out of the ground like 8 to 1 to gold. That means the price should be 8 to 1 to gold right now. And there's a lot more gold being held in vaults around the world. Silver has all been consumed, or a lot of it's been consumed. They continue to consume it. But when you go to these stores like Atmex and stuff and you buy silver, you're buying silver that has mostly just been freshly mined not long ago. They're going to run out, guys. They're going to run out of silver because the world is going into chaos now. The people are getting frightened. Silver has been the people's money for thousands of years. And I believe that in one fail swift move, silver could go back to being actually money again. Now, I know that sounds ludicrous. But the fiat currencies are getting ready to collapse. And when they collapse, because they were mismanaged, and you guys can all start to see that now, there's going to be a wealth transfer. And the thing about it is, is, as these countries are starting to turn on the cryptocurrencies, the well, first one's China, but other countries might start to do it too, and they might start to follow suit. Uh, it might happen. It might not happen. I'm not absolutely certain it'll happen. But regardless of whether it happens, silver is going to be a Cinderella story, I believe, at a certain point, you know, and it's going to be the physical metal. And as the system collapses, parts of the power grid are going to go down. And in those areas, what do you think they're going to use for trade and commerce? 
and we're talking about maybe large areas are going to go back to a primitive lifestyle because the power grid's going to be down and i don't think that the system is going to be able to support bringing that power grid back on in these particular areas especially once uh the people get uh it's going to be difficult anyway I think those areas are most likely going to stay off and the system is not going to be able to support 8 billion people like it was able to because we're diseased. Not only are we diseased, but we're all uh, fighting back and forth. Everybody is squabbling over this and squabbling over that. And, and I think this is going to intensify as, as time progresses. So we're moving into a world that's much more difficult to live in. And it's us doing it to ourselves. Mankind is doing it to themselves. But still, it's happening. And I think an awful lot of the problems that we're going through are problems that are being generated by us. Not by the planet. The planet's still the same. Same old planet it was back in 2019. We're the ones creating the problems for ourselves. When will it get resolved? I do believe it will get resolved at a certain point. Because the problems will intensify to a certain point where we're going to see the entire world go undergo uh, changes in leadership probably at a certain point. Because of, it just can't, this is, this is unsustainable what's going on. The downhill slide that we're on that's being caused by ourselves, doing it to ourselves, is absolutely unsustainable. And as we become more deep into this thing you're gonna see that gold and silver become more and more uh more and more used as money again May, maybe the 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 core part of the system might say hey we don't want to use this as money but that doesn't matter because people will when it gets bad enough because the people have for the last 6,000 years, and it works, you don't need technology to make it work. It just works. A silver coin in your hand just works. It's simple. It's the simplicity of it all. Okay. Uh, let's take a look now, and let's open up the markets right here and take a look. Uh, we're down... Uh, 22.39 for silver. We're down 11 cents on the day so far. Now let's take a look at uh, uh, gold. Gold today. What we're looking at is uh, it's not up nine dollars and twenty cents. 17.25. Now there's another thing I notice is I notice this more and more lately that the gold and silver price are not moving together completely. Uh, they used to always be in sync. They're not in sync anymore. Gold and silver price are not in sync anymore. 17.52 for gold today, and now we're going to take a look at uh, cryptocurrency, and we're seeing a major moves down in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, we're looking at a uh, a Bitcoin price of 42,296 today, and it's down. Dow Jones Industrial Average today is down 10, uh, 10 points down today at 34,754. It seems like it can't crack too much above that 35,000 mark. Having an awful lot of problems getting above that mark. And uh, we're, we're risking market, a market crash. Uh, and the risk is going to start to end around the end of, uh, the end of March. March is the date. Until, until that point, a market crash could happen. And it's most likely to happen before the end of this year, if it's going to happen. Uh, the longer we go, the less likely the risk of a market crash, because the uh, hyperinflation will become more entrenched. The inflation will become more entrenched. And the way of thinking, see, it's a uh, hyperinflation is a is a is a is a loss of confidence it's caused by a loss of confidence and we're going through that transition period right now uh and 
people are seeing the actual effect of the of the inflation they're seeing prices going up and this is making them lose confidence and once we get a past that certain point then at that point you know uh, the Dow is gonna hyperinflate because they have no choice they're gonna have to there's gonna be so much uh, malinvestment in the system so much leverage that they're gonna have to support the markets at any cost and so any fall in the markets after next March is going to be responded to with uh, very quick measures to bring it back up again. Now at this point, you know, they're, uh, they're worried about this, this, this inflation and they're trying to fight it with everything they got, but they're not being very successful because they can't use the tools to fight it you know and we're seeing interest rates today go up take a look at this when I when I get there in just a second we're gonna take a look at the move index at 56.79 now here's the thing we got today we got bond yields rising we've had bond yields rising yesterday and they're rising quite significantly the last couple days it's like somebody put the pedal on these bond yields rising you know put the pedal down I'm going to tell you, they're not going to rise too much faster, and the market's going to f start to fall out of bed. Uh, the Fed's going to have to do something about this. They cannot allow these yields to go up too much higher. Uh, they can't allow the U.S. 10-year to go above 2.5%, uh, and they can't allow the 30-year to go over, say, 3.5% or whatever. It starts to get up into those territories, and, and it's they're going to have to do something. The system's starting to it's starting to go wonky, guys. It's starting to if it was an engine, you'd be hearing one of the pistons completely fail, and the pistons getting ready to come out through the through the and the rings are start going to fly all over the ground. The system's starting to uh, starting to throw throw a bearing this way and throw a bearing that way. It's starting to it's starting to come apart at the seams. Anyway, that's what's happening with U.S. Treasuries, and this is actually kind of frightening right here, what's happening with U.S. Treasuries right now. But the system's unstable. Okay, guys, let's do the pets. Oh, we got the dollar index. The dollar index is 93.33 today, and it's up. Okay, now we're going to do the pets. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pets for today, and uh, we got three pets to look at, and uh, the first one is, uh, they're all sent, all three pets are sent in to us by Kimberly Knapp, and I'm going to tell you guys what, so it means these three pets are living in the same house, so, so uh, it's probably, uh, now, first pet we're going to take a look at is Harley. Harley's four years old, and I'm going to tell you what, I can tell just by looking at him, he is one smart good dog just by looking at this picture you can tell you know probably very friendly too uh, I imagine uh, I that he's probably his tail probably, you ever seen dogs that wiggle their whole they wiggle when they like they want to be petted or whatever they wiggle and they're they're instead of just wiggling their tail they, I, I don't know if he does that or not but maybe he does he looks like the kind of dog that could possibly you know you ever see them <laughs> they're really happy to see you you know and they're not just their tails wiggling but their whole their whole body's wiggling you know uh, I can imagine that maybe he does that but I'm not sure uh, but he looks like an awfully smart dog let's take a look at the next one the next one's a little bit of an unusual pet. His age is unknown. His name is Charlie. And he is an opossum. And he's kind of cute. You know, possums are kind of cute. Uh, that's if the, you don't have problems with possums, you know, like, uh, 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 but for people who have problems with possums, they don't think they're cute, but <laughs> because they can be awful, awful mischievous, you know, in the wild setting. But uh, they make good pets, 
And uh, here is Charlie, and he is kind of cute with those little black eyes, you know, beady little eyes. <laughs> he looks like a real little, <laughs> a real little criminal. <laughs> maybe he gets into trouble, maybe he doesn't, I don't know. But he looks like he could get into a lot of trouble from time to time. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the next pet. And this is Nico, and she is eight years old. And she looks like a real cuddle. She looks like she likes to cuddle a lot. And it uh, looks like she's really enjoying being pet petted right there. And she's cute, too. And she's all black, shiny black. Well, that's Nico. Thank you guys for watching my show. And we'll catch you guys in the very next episode. Bye-bye.